right, coming up next, a UFC featherweight division fight. Well, this dude is a submission magician. I am very thankful I am not fighting him here tonight, and it's really a case of pick your poison. He has so many different chokes in his arsenal and has been a master of getting these fights exactly where he wants them. There are black belts and there are guys like this who can do jujitsu at a level that not many people, regardless of the time spent, can truly get to. His understanding of position is truly unbelievable. He always has the frame. The moment you start to press into him, he's always underhooking, always looking for the next escape, but not to get back to his feet. Right. He wants to go from bottom to top. If he's in the top position, you are constantly, constantly in danger. Don't think he can't submit you from the bottom, right. but his position of choice will always be in the top position sitting yes. in that beautiful half -block. Yeah, his striking also has improved a lot, but no secret as to what he'll be trying to do in this matchup tonight. Well, it's always exciting when you have such a high-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner. This man has been a master of the submission in the UFC, and even though a lot of people know what's coming, more often than not, they're unable to stop. Because the knowledge, the knowledge of the Jiu-Jitsu game is truly something that it's hard to replicate when a guy is as good as he is. I mean, he will jump for a triangle. He will jump for an arm bar. And as you slam him to the ground, he starts to understand, okay, I'm right where I need you right now. This is when the game starts for him. If he doesn't secure that submission, he gets you where he needs you to be in order to start to really make you drown. It's like going in deep water oh. and getting pulled down over and over again because every time you think, if I do this, it'll make it better, it just makes it worse. And best of luck trying to find a training partner to simulate this guy in the gym. It can't happen, and it won't happen. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a freestyle fighter holding a professional record of 13 wins, four losses. He stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Merced Bechtel. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of 15 wins, three losses. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Yeah! 50 K E K. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. So Herb Dean, third man in there for this one. Ready. You ready to fight? All right, folks, round one is underway. Good to have you with us tonight. This could be a very technical fight, and if you are someone who likes the jiu-jitsu, oh, you like that left hand. Oh, he might be out. Oh! Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this? And now he's got the tie clinch. Oh, he lands a straight punch there, DC. We'll see if he can follow it up now. He has been throwing the strike. Oh! oh. Circling towards the left now. If your opponent has you in the clinch, pull it down on your head, landing punch after punch, you have got to clear that collar tie, reach back inside, and try to find space. All right, so a good job defensively by him here as he raises the guard and prevents any damage. Shades of James Tony. Always seeing things coming at him. He's such a great defensive fighter. Nice right hand. Oh, he's wearing it now, bleeding from his cheek. So just over 20 total strikes. And now landed for Bursad Beckham. Big falls to punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Big hook. Oh, nice right hand. Oh. He needs to start looking to finish now. 
because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, straight right. He across the midpoint in round one. Oh! He's getting lit up right now, John. He's got him hurt here. Wow! Some real power shots here. strike that he can find at any time. He's so confident in finding that uppercut that it's landing over and over again. Wind it up on the right there to know that. Well, defense doesn't necessarily win championships in MMA. Oh! He was hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh, look at that. He left up and landed the diving punch to the head. All right, so he's sort of turtled up here. Not great body language. Perhaps he's trying to bait him in a little bit. Oh, so an interesting decision there is he decides to stand up and relinquish the dominant position. Great punch landed with so much power. Back and forth we go! Oh, and he finally gets the takedown now. So what do they say? It, try, try again. If, if at first you don't succeed, you try, try again, and this guy is the poster boy for that saying, because he shot many takedown attempts, and he finally has secured one. Oh, he might have got him with a choke. here 45 seconds remain in the round now he's gonna attack a triangle choke here So inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Trying to guard pass here, not today. No, it ain't happening. Good job understanding the transition. And a nice job at least staying upright on that. And now he's got that tight catch. Well, I'm not sure the extent to which he has recovered, but we do see the end of the round. DC, talk us through the replay. Well, he's a tough guy. He's going to make it to the stool. He's going to survive unless you put him completely out of there. Unfortunately, he's in there with a guy that does have that ability. Second round here. All right, so the uppercuts have been a big part of the storyline in this one, but the setups have really been key for him. He's not telegraphing that strike, and the opponent hasn't been able to adjust. He has not been able to see them. It's a very tricky punch, especially in the way that he throws it. He throws it at a time when you expect so many different strikes, but it's because he has such a vast knowledge of just finding that strike. Well, the right hand has been there at times, not that time. Just missed with the left there. Oh, stuffs the takedown without issue. And they separate. Got the single collar tie. I mean, he's cutting it down to size with these beautiful leg kicks. Well, DC, headgear's not allowed, but he has raised the hands and he's put a beautiful thing. Oh, what 
a beautiful counter to the guillotine there. Gets side mount, and now maybe the Von Fluke choke will be there. Ovin St. Prue has got to like that transition there. tonight, champ. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard. He's so skilled. He's so tricky and he's so good at weaving a web that gets you lost in it that he made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory. So there he is, your winner by submission. That could hold up as one of the better subs of the year. Near perfect execution tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop this contest at 1 minute 33 seconds of round number two. For the winner by submission, Dan 50 All right, so what a performance by this young man here tonight as he gets the win by way of submission. He certainly put a lot of stock into getting the finish tonight, and he did just that. Congratulations. It was very tough fight. But he knew that if he did everything right, he could get to his position, which is the crown, and he would be able to find a...